Hello everyone and welcome to my very first YouTube video. This is going to be about my premium Pelican the Catch 120 fishing kayak. You can go to their website and find all the information you need to know about this boat. It's 12 feet long and I have made a lot of improvements to it over the three years that I have owned it. I have really enjoyed this boat and I do recommend it. Um, some of the modifications I have done in the past worked, some did not, but I think I finally have it all together. So this is what I'm going to show you today. First of all, at the front of the boat, I have added an additional rope support. This comes in real handy for tying it off at the dock. On the bow of the boat, I have installed an eyelet. It is anchored very good on the inside. This eyelet is used to help hoist my kayak into my truck. Uh, I have a winch mounted in my truck. I'm using the Badlands uh, ZXR 2500 and I can actually winch this boat into the back of my pickup truck as well as I can uh, load it up when I'm at the water. Now, what I do is I use a device that slides into the receiver of the truck. It's an extender, as you can see. It extends into the receiver and goes to the back of the truck for additional support on the kayak. But it also extends out over the water, which makes it really easy for unloading this kayak in shallow water. I fish a lot of reservoirs, and you're not allowed to put your trailer or your truck tires in the water. So this is a big help to me. Um, the winch is remote control, which makes it really, really nice. Um, one of the newest extras that I've added to this kayak is my uh, anchor, and I'm using the Anchor Wizard. Uh, so far, it's working really good. It has a little bit thinner rope than what I wish, but that's the way it comes. The advantage to this is that you can actually crank your anchor up and lower it right from the seat. It makes it really, really handy. You don't have to crawl to the front of the boat like I did with my old anchor system here, which was in a four inch pipe. I had to actually take it all out of here, put it on my anchor trolley, and drop it in the water. With this system, it's very easy to lower and raise the anchor. Now, one thing that I did do here is I added a piece of cord onto my trolley. It runs up, it goes through, and it goes through this ringlet that slides back and forth on the rope. This makes it really handy when the anchor has been dropped. I can use my anchor trolley, which is attached to the side of the boat, to uh, move the anchor to the front or to the rear, and it gets secured right here. That's been a great help uh, when fishing. Uh, you can move the anchor either way, depending on your current or the wind. This is a typical storage compartment here. Uh, most all kayaks have it. Uh, with mine, I keep a uh, excuse me uh, insulated bag. Uh, it's just an insulated zipper bag and I can put my fish in it if I want to keep any. I usually do the catch and release. But you can also put cold items in there when you're going to spend the day on the water. Inside it, I have a small box that I keep some uh, tools, uh, morning flashing lights, rope, and uh, medical supplies in. I carry an extra prop. This is the original prop that came on the boat. I keep it in there for an extra. I think that's a good idea. In the back of the boat, as you can barely see it, I have installed the receiver to my fish finder, and I have a Striker 4 fish finder. It works really, really good. Um, I use it quite a bit. It uh, keeps me well informed of the temperature of the water. Uh, it'll also measure the, uh, the speed of my kayak, uh, the depth of the water, as well as show up some fish if you're lucky enough to find some. I also have installed rod holders on the left and right hand side of the boat. Comes in great when you are um, still fishing. Um, inside the original anchor holder, I put a float. It's an orange float down inside there and I can actually connect this uh, to my trolley and drop it into the water to mark where uh, I have found a fish bed. Um, you don't have to attach it to the trolley unless you want to. I usually have a weight. That way I can back away from the spot and then cast over to it. Now on the fish finder, this is a 
Striker 4, and it works really good, but I did find that I had a problem with the sun shining on the screen and not being able to read it very well. So I built this little, uh, I guess you would want to call it a, a vent shade. It's made out of plexiglass, very thin plexiglass that I melted and molded, and I secured on the insides with Velcro. Now my tackle box is attached by a cord around the base of my rod holder. And on the bottom of the uh, of the kayak I have added slip resistant paddings which makes it really nice uh, when your feet get wet you don't slip around on it near as bad as you would just the dry uh, fiberglass. Now the seat has been modified this is a two-stage seat you can use it high or low I have it on high but it's only held down by this uh, strap right here. Uh, I did not like that what I did was I additionally added some screws right here and these screws are used in all four corners and the seat is actually screwed down to the kayak so it's not coming loose or wobbling. Now in addition to that I put armrest on mine. I use some PCV which goes up and it turns. You can see it a little bit better on the other side and I supported it here with the bolt it runs all the way up to the back of the seat where the same thing it's attached here. Now this is a wooden dowel that runs down to about here. And then from the bottom side up is PCV tubing that goes over that allowing it to slide back and forth. I fixed mine with a screw going through the PCV into the wood and it anchors it so it stays in one position. I had to raise mine because as you can see here this piece is normally touched down here, and it made the back lean too far back. So I had to raise my seat up more for a more comfortable ride. And this works really good. It's padded with um, insulation for that you use around piping. Makes it a really nice, solid armrest and very, very comfortable. The original straps I do keep tight, and I use the loops to put a rag in to uh, dry your hands. This is a four inch PCV pipe. Uh, you can unscrew it here and take it off or put it back on and tighten it down. Uh, this is mounted through uh, the drain vents and I use this to hold my tall coffee cups, uh, drink cans, and etc. It makes it really nice. Uh, I use a catch bag right here. It's attached to the back of the seat. Uh, I usually can put a bottle of water in there or I can throw my trash in there and that, you know, kind of keep up with it all. Uh, moving on further to the back, uh, we'll go around to this other side. And over here is my net for retrieving the fish if I'm lucky enough to catch one. And what I did to this is I added a uh, little clip right here. And with this little clip, it holds the net in place. And then it's also secured back here by the handle with Velcro. But it makes it easy just to pull it up and pop it out. And this net is also attached with a bungee cord. In case you should drop it in the water, you can retrieve it. And that's been a, a really quick method of uh, keeping my net in one place. I keep a set of scales under here. Uh, the scales... Uh, also have a tape measure on the bottom where you can measure the length of your fish and weigh them. And of course it's attached to a bungee cord as well which uh, keeps you from dropping it into the water or losing it. And it's all, it's all held together on the back side here with a piece of Velcro. Um, I have everything on this boat secured down to the boat. It's either anchored with bungee cords or it's anchored with screws, whatever it may be, it's all secured. Uh, this is an oar that is attached with an oar lock, also with an additional bungee strap. This holds it in place really good if you need to, to need to use the oar. Now, everything on this kayak is anchored to the kayak or attached by means of some form of uh, retractable cord. The reason for that is kayaks will turn over. Um, I guarantee you they'll turn over. I can testify to that. And depending on how deep the water is you are in, when it turns over, everything in that boat is going to go to the bottom of the lake. And it might be too deep for you to retrieve. Whereas if it's attached to the boat, 
If you're lucky enough, at least you can swim to the shore and drag your boat and all of your accessories to where you can get in shallow enough water to uh, turn it right side back up. Uh, everything is waterproof or is as waterproof as possible, um, and I like that. Um, in the very back of the boat here, I have uh, what I call a little bit of a modification. <laughs> I have a um, Makina uh, small electric trolling motor, and the biggest advantage I did to my trolling motor was to put a rudder on it. This is a piece of plexiglass that I have attached to this rudder, and it has made a world of difference, guys. It's a whole lot better than this bottom one, and it really does steer your kayak. It's a great help. In addition to that, I have a wedge weed eater type prop on it. Best thing I've ever put on this motor, <laughs> other than the rudder. You can go through some grass with this without getting all tangled up. My old prop, I would get stuck all the time. With this one, it's been a great, great help. This motor has been modified in a sense of being able to control it with your feet. Um, I took the original head off of this motor. I routed my wiring all the way down, and it goes to the front into a control panel that I have made. This is a waterproof control box. This box has a switch at the top, and with this switch, I can easily move it into the forward position or reverse or in the middle for stop. I can also turn the knob here, which will allow me to vary the speeds to whatever I want them to be. I have a gauge mounted on the bottom. It tells me my percentage. I guess that would be a voltage going to the motor. The original motor came with three speeds in reverse, five forward. With this one, uh, the, with the variable switch, you can turn it to whatever you want. The little gauge comes in handy. You can pick you out a number that you like to troll with, and you can maintain that number. Or fishing along the edge and casting, you can go at the same speed all the time, whatever you want to set it at. Uh, it's all connected on the back side through ball joints and they work really, really well. Now that controls your speed, your forward and reverse of your motor. However, the, to control all of this and steer it, it's done by the feet. Uh, originally, the kayak come with these uh, foot rests on it that were adjustable and you could put pressure on them when you were oaring. Uh, I changed mine. If you'll push this little button right here, this whole foot piece will come out. Once it's out, you can turn it upside down and on the other side, right about here, there's a pin and you can grind that pin off. That way this will slide all the way up and back very, very easy. I connected this cable to the each pedal. It's been braided. The cable is a steel cable that is coated in a very thin rubber coating. This is some great stuff. Extremely strong, slides real well. But to keep from oversteering the motor, I added a pedal stop here and on the other side. It's nothing more than a screw, but it keeps you from turning the motor too far to the left or too far to the right. Uh, I have mine set where it stops at about 3 o'clock and at 9 o'clock if you go past those figures. Uh, say to four or to eight, you're actually going to reverse the boat, and that's not something that uh, you want to do. Now, when you're coming in the shore and you need to bring your motor up because you don't want it dragging if you're going to beach it, I have attached this cable here. This cable here, like the others, it runs through a stainless steel pulley. It's, it's anchored here, and then the cord continues back to, the, to this handle right here. I can reach back here and grab this handle and I can actually pull it and as I pull it the motor is going to lift up as you can see. It comes all the way up and slides onto the boat. Then I secure it onto this little eyelet hook. Now my motor is up and out of the water. Very simple. You reverse the process. comes off and the motor will drop back down into the water. Then the handle gets attached to a piece of Velcro. Now you're in the water and everything is fine and good. However, there is a lock mounted right here. This lock has to be depressed to raise this motor up and down. So to keep it depressed so you can do that, I made this little extension arm that comes up 
and goes across. It presses onto the release, and this orange cord is a piece of bungee that I have wrapped around, and that keeps tension on that lock, and it keeps it where you can raise it and you can lower it. The problem is, once it's in this position, if you hit reverse, the motor will rear up. So what I did to that was I attached the cord here, it comes down, it also goes through some pulleys, and it comes up here to this piece. Now when you're here, once you're in the water, you simply take the cord, you pull it out, you release it, and it holds the cord. When it does that, it pulls this latch out. And when the latch is pulled out, the motor will not raise up. So now you can go in reverse, you can go forward, whatever you want, the motor doesn't rear up. But coming in to land it, you do have to release the pressure and then pull your cord and the motor will raise up. I found that to be a, a very easy, simple way of doing it. Where the cables attach back here to the steering arms, I went one extra step, I added this uh, sleeve underneath the uh, cable just so that it would not wear it. I put these quick releases on to where I can undo it from the motor if I want to replace it or take it off, use it on another boat, whatever. Um, I guess you'd call it the tantrum. This is uh, made of three pieces of square aluminum tubing. Uh, I ran it through the handle. I extended it over to, to about this spot where I ran two pieces of metal across and it fit right into a nice a notch that was in the in the boat. I used stainless steel swivel pulleys on all of this so that it would uh, give me a good pull on the angles of the motor. Um, these three pieces were attached across here with a bolt and then once again in the back. It was bolted in the front here and here and in the back I had the three pieces of square tubing here and they are secured on the underside with bolts. Now I'm all set and ready to uh, go. This is nice and solid and stiff, but it moved left and right. So I had to come in here and shim this piece with a piece of metal that I had, and now I've got a good tight snug fit. It does not slip at all. Now going down the highway, when the motor is fully retracted, I have a flag that I like to use, and I slide it in back here, and it goes into place, and it, uh, it gives me a nice little... Uh, end piece to the boat so no one will hopefully run into me. The, the boat is being powered up by a very strong motor, uh, excuse me, a very strong battery which powers the motor and the fish finder. This battery is uh, very large. It's inside this uh, case and the case is screwed to the bottom of the boat and the lid is secured with a strap. Now this battery is probably a little overkill. Uh, probably did not need to get one that big. Um, this is a heavy battery. It weighs about 55 pounds. Uh, it's an Autocraft Deep Cycle Marine RV Pro. 675 cold cranking amps, 840 cranking amps, and 180 reserve capacity. More than enough power to run this boat for me all day long and I love to troll a lot so I have no problem with it other than I think it's a little heavy and if I had it all to do over again uh, I will probably buy the next size smaller. Now my rod holders I made uh, out of PCV pipe um, I'm going to move this out of our way and it's, um, it's attached inside a rod holder and you can tell which pipes I use. I did add an extra piece only here to help protect the handles and hold them into place a little bit better, but I carry four of them there, and while fishing, I normally use the two that's mounted on the boat. Uh, that seems to work out real well for me. Now, the oar is attached here with a strap as well as here. So you can re remove those, and you can, um, you can use your, your your paddle if you want to. But one thing I have done that's been a great help for me, I'm not all that stable anymore, so I made myself a set of pontoons. And uh, these pontoons are, are just, a, just a great feature. And they work really good. I picked them up off of uh, Amazon. And the way these things work <clears throat> is you simply slide it into this hole here. And you can you can move these however you want. Uh, they will slide, uh, it'll slide in 
a long ways or out a long ways, whichever, whichever one that you prefer to use. The uh, main pipe is secured at the top with a screw. Uh, it does go all the way across. Uh, once it's in place, you simply uh, line your hole up and you drop your, 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 your pin. Oops, I went over it. Let me line it up here for you guys. Uh, yeah, there we go. Once it's lined up, you can drop this pin down inside the hole. Lock it. It holds it into place. So when you're in the water running down, the pontoons sit in the water. I use them on both sides of the boat, and it secures it quite well. Uh, it's going to be really tough to turn the boat over. It's great for rough water. Now, if you're going to go back to shore and you don't care to use them, you can release the lock here, and you can raise it up out of the water. And once it's up out of the water, it's a simple procedure to slide your pin. I'm not left-handed, so bear with me, guys. Slide your pin back through the hole, and uh, it'll come out on the other side, and it'll it will lock it into a. There we go. It'll lock it into place, and it'll hold it up out of the water for you, so that you can uh, go back in the shore and not have to worry about it. Uh, I keep them in my truck when I'm not using them, and if it's a windy day or a day that I feel like I'm going to be moving around a lot, uh, I'll put them in, and it's just been a. A, a great advantage for me. Um, the pontoons can be purchased off of Amazon and the PCV piping and hooks can come from the big box stores along with all the other uh, insulation that I use for the armrests as well as making the uh, the rod holders in the back. So that's about it as far as that goes. Uh, this has been a great boat for me. Uh, I know this has been a long video. I tried to keep it short but uh, it's kind of hard to do. I didn't want to get into too much depth, but I did want you to uh, see what I did. One last note on your anchor. I cover the bottom line with silicone to keep the rocks from cutting the rope because it is attached to the bottom of the anchor and it's connected at the top with a small tie strap. If you get hung up, and you're trying to pull your anchor up, these rods will get hung under a tree limb and you just about can't release the anchor. So a good hard snug will, uh, jerk will pop this little tiny tie strap and then you can actually pull it from the back of the anchor, pulling it out from whatever it's hooked under and that works out really good too. Well guys, that's about it. Uh, I know I've talked fast and I've covered a lot, but uh, it's, I've gone through a lot of mistakes to make this boat. I think it's set up just perfect for me. I love it. I enjoy it. And I hope maybe you find something that you can use on your kayak and uh, make things a little bit better for you. Make the ease of lowering it in the water and the ease of raising it up a lot better. And I really do appreciate your time today taking a look at my kayak. I love it. Uh, if something's happened to it, I'd get me another one. And in the meantime, I hope all y'all have a really nice day and hey, I'm ready to go fishing.